last did macrame. I was probably 10 to 12 years old. Yeah, somewhere around in there. And so this was in the uh, 1970s and I was making plant hangers and using that horrible jute rope that actually like, um, you get the, it, it t completely tears up your hands. You get almost like, it's, it's, they're not splinters, but like it just creates these cuts in your hands when you're working with this horrible jute rope. But I was completely obsessed. I swear to God, every plant in our house and every one of my friends had a planter uh, hanger that I made for them also because what do you do with them after you've made like 25 of them, right? So, so I was completely obsessed, have not done macrame since until this week. And now I'm completely obsessed again. So you're definitely going to be seeing some more macrame um, videos coming up on the channel. Today we're going to start with a really simple pearl bracelet project. It's completely beginner friendly um, and you don't need a lot of materials for it. So let me bring you in first and show you the bracelet. So this is the sample that I made and I absolutely love it. Uh, look at this fabulous button that I am using. This is a brand spanking new Tierra Cast button that honestly has not even hit the market. Uh, they sent me a sample in advance of everything and I loved it so much that I had to use it with these greens because it just was so perfect with it. Uh, so I will be carrying this button as soon as I can get my hands on it, which should be in the next week or two. Let me show you what it looks like off my wrist here. I'm using Irish wax linen for this. Okay, maybe I made my buttonhole a little small, but you want them to be where it's a little bit difficult to get on and off because you don't want it to slide out too easily. So there we go. So this is what it looks like. All I have done here in between each one of these pearls, and these are big hole pearls. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, all I've done in between each one of these is a square knot, a macrame square knot in between each one. A macrame square knot is actually consists of two knots, so um, well, I'll show you how to, how to do that. We've got the button clasp that you actually just knot on, and then for the closure, that's just a knot also. So literally, the only tools that you need for this, let me kind of show you, you're going to need some big hole pearls. Big hole pearls have a one and a half to two millimeter hole in them. Two millimeter is most common. So these are some two millimeter pearls that I have in my store right now. I will work on keeping a supply of the two millimeter big hole pearls in stock because we're going to need them for a bunch of these projects that I'm going to be doing. Here's another gorgeous tiara cast button that I absolutely adore. So we're going to use that. Irish waxed linen. I carry this in about hmm, 20 colors in two different sizes. So the size that I used here is what's called seven strand. That means that for each one of these cords, there's seven strands that make up a cord. So it's thicker than this, which is the four strand or the four ply. Some people call it floor ply. I'm going to use the four ply for this particular bracelet and we can take a look at what a difference it makes in the visually how you know this was a little bit it's going to be a little bit thicker and um, more obvious so we'll see how, whether this is something that we want to work with in the future with the big hole pearls so you're going to experiment with me you'll need some scissors to cut the the um, cord. I could use any kind of scissors. These just happen to be one of my favorites. These are the Xeron uh, cutters and um, I do carry those in my store. Optional is using some super glue or some kind of glue that has a, a small uh, tip to it. So a, a GS Hypo Cement would work really well for this also. I will tell you that I have not put any glue on these knots. One of the joys of working with the waxed linen is it literally has a wax coating on it so that these knots are super secure once you tie them. Um, now, if it still makes you nervous, go ahead and use the glue to dab a little bit of glue, um, you know, just a little touch on the knots to make sure that they stay secure. And that's it. That's all you're going to need. Now, let me show you an optional item and I'm going to use this. This is the uh, mini macrame board that I got. And this has been sitting around in my office for about two years. Um, you know, I always have these plans for doing all these things and it takes me forever to get around to them. Ann Dilker 
friend of mine uh, designed this macrame board. I love it because normal macrame boards are much bigger. Uh, and that's great if you're working with bigger projects, but we're just working with a, a bracelet. So this is plenty of room for us to work with. The, the, uh, it's all, you've got all these inch markers so that you are able to measure it without having to get out a tape measure, which is cool. The slots make a big, huge difference for me. So when you're trying to coordinate all your cords, you can pop some of the cords in the slots. In the old days, I used T-pins and I had to wrap the cords around the T-pins to do the same thing that these slots do now. Um, I still like to use a T-pin to start mine off with, but um, that's just me, so if you want to. Now I will say that for the purposes of this video, I find all of this uh, very distracting on the front and I want you to concentrate on the knots. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the back as we work on this. Um, so let's talk about cord length. When you're doing macrame, the, the rule of thumb is that you want it to be three and a half to four inches I'm sorry, three and a half to four times your finished project length. So in my case, I need about an eight inch bracelet. And um, so eight times four is 36. So I just went and did about an arm's length full, which is about three feet with the 36 inches. And then I did a second one because we're going to double this over. This is going to be two of the strands. OK, so right there, I'm going to cut. And then we're going to want two more strands that are going to go down the center of our bracelet. Those don't need to be as long. So let's not, you know, waste extra. So I'm going to do that probably about 24 inches. And then I'm going to do that as a doubled and cut that. It is, you don't want to have to, to add cord when you're working on this. Uh, so go ahead and make sure that you have enough cord cut. And then after you've made one, you're kind of going to get a sense of how much extra you have left over and whether you can maybe, you know, go down to, um, you know, 32 inches or something like that for your length. So I'm going to take both of these cords and I'm going to bend them over the center here of this bracelet of the button. So here I, I'm po popping both ends through here. Now their middle is going to be different for each one of these cords. So the other thing you could do that might be even easier would be to put them in one at a time. Okay. So this one and this belong to the same cord. So let me bring the two ends together. Whoops. I knew I was going to do that. You try to control the cor corral them and they just don't want to corral. Okay. You stay off to the center. There we go. Now I know that that's centered right there. And then this one is the other one cord that's shorter. We're going to bring those two ends together and then make sure that that's roughly centered along that bracelet shank. Okay. So now I'm just going to take all four cords and tie an overhand knot right here. And don't overthink this. You're just going around your finger and then pulling those cords through the knot, through the hole, okay? When you're working, let me tell you, if you haven't worked with wax linen before, it's a little weird because the whole thing is just coated in wax. So you do get a little bit of stickiness on your fingers. Um, that's normal and you will get used to it really quickly. But the first project that I did, I was like, ew, ick, this feels weird. And now I'm all like, yes, I love the wax linen because I know how solid that cord is going to be. Um, so here, as I'm doing this overhand knot, the, the reason I kind of go into all that is you, you want to make sure that you don't prematurely knot it way down here because getting it all the way back up to the shank is going to be a problem. So uh, one thing that you can do if you have an awl around, you can always use the awl to help move that knot where you want it to be. But your fingernail also works great as a knot mover. So. There we go. We've got that, that knot right there. Now I'm ready to start using the macrame board. And this is where I'm going to pop this T-pin in right up here in near the button. 
and I'm just going to pop it into the board like so. Then I'm going to separate out these strands and they kind of want to stick together. I want the two long ones on the outside and the two short ones on the inside. All right, so there we go. So we've got one on the outside here, one on the outside here, short ones in the center. One last thing I'm going to do on these ones in the center, I'm going to cut the two of them together at an angle. And that's just so that it'll make it easier to get to string the pearl on as I'm doing that. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is string on a pearl. And you're taking both those center strands and popping it through the middle of your big hole pearl. All right. Then here's where I absolutely love these uh, cords. I'm going to pop the cords into this to the, um, I'm sorry, where I love the slots. I'm going to pop the cord into the slots. One of the other things that's really nice about that is some, we're going to have to get these cords underneath the center cords. Look how the pearl leaves a, a nice area up here where we're going to have no problem getting the cords underneath there. We don't have to deal with trying to elevate this at all. The pearl actually just naturally does that. Because I just know I'm going to dump those pearls again. I'm going to put those out of the way. So here is what we're going to be doing repetitively. It's the square knot. Now, if you've done a square knot before on any project, uh, in school what I was taught was right over left and then left over right. You have to do the two knots uh, to make a single square knot. And I just keep with that same thought in my head here as I'm working with macrame. I'm going to take the right hand cord, it's going to go over the top of the two here and under the left hand cord. Okay, so right first. Um, one of the things that I remember clearly from being taught macrame when I was 11 or 10 or 11 was you're creating a four here. So that can help you kind of visualize what's going on. Now with your left cord, you're going to go under the cords and through the hole. Don't worry, I'm going to repeat this about a million times. And then you pop those up and the cords go along either side of that pearl. So that's the first half of our square knot. So now that was right over left, now we're going to do left over right. So left over the center cords, under the cord on the right, and then your right hand cord goes under the centers and through the hole. So it's the opposite of what you just did. You just started with the other side. Okay, so now I have tied those two together. That's our first square knot. So now we're ready to throw another pearl on. That means we're just going to take it out of this slot, the two cords out of the slot here. I'm going to grab another pearl. We are going to feed that on, put the cords back into the slot here. And then we're going to repeat our sequence right over left so it's over and then under and then with your left it's under and then through when i was doing this and reteaching myself one of the things that i was having the worst time with was remembering whether I just done the right or the left and that's where I went because actually with the, the stuff that I was reading online told me to start with the left first and that really kind of blew my mind so when I changed it and went no right over left left over right then all of a sudden that cl clicked in my head so we've already done our right over left here's our left over the and under and then the other cord goes under and through And those are our two knots there. Ready for another pearl. Grab this. So this is one of the things that's so cool is you can get this entire bracelet done in 30 minutes. Once, I mean, your first one might take you a little longer, but not by much. And so this is one of those perfect last minute gift items, or if you're, if you make things to sell and you need something that you know, there's not too much labor in it. This is a great, 
great project for that. Okay, so here we go. Right over left and under the other chord. Left, under the center, and through the hole. That's number one. So now we're doing left over right and under the other chord. And then taking that other chord and under the two in the middle and through the hole. Okay, so let's say you get yourself all confused about whether you just did a right or a left. There's a way you can tell. And I'm gonna bring you in close here. Let me get my glasses so I can point it out perfectly. Right here, see that like there's a little ridge over here? This is tells me what chord I would use next. So that means that the open spot over here, that's the side that I just did first. So if I were gonna now do another square knot, here's that little hump. That means I would start with the right hand chord and then have to do a left to do another square knot right there. Okay, so where the opening is on the left, that's the one I just did. Where the hump is, that's the side that you would start on again. Okay, so let's get another pearl going here. I'll add a couple more with you and then I'm gonna show you how to make the self uh, knotted clasp closure here. You'll notice these pearls uh, are a little bit wide. They're oval. They're more oval than round. And so it's kind of inevitable that they're going to move so that, that, that it's up and down a little bit. So I'm now just kind of purposely trying to put it in that position as I knot these in so that they won't have to try to man uh, maneuver later. Okay, right over left and under the other chord, left, under the two in the center, and through the hole. Then I have to do the other side, so it's left over the chords and under the other one. Then you take the right hand chord and go under and through the hole. Let's do one more together for Barbie's bracelet. You can definitely, I mean, this, this doesn't um, curve a lot, but you could turn this into a necklace just by making it longer. No reason why you can't do that. Pop this back into the slots for tension. Right over left and under. Left, under, and through. This one's got that little ridge right there in the pearl, and I thought that would be kind of cool to have it sit along that ridge. Okay, left, over, and under. Right, under, and through. All right, so let's talk a little bit about sizing here. I'm gonna take this off the board so that we can use the front for sizing purposes. If you place this so that the button is at the zero, this will sh t tell you how far, how long this particular piece is. So we're almost at three inches here. Um, now, when I was measuring mine against my wrist, what I did is I made it so that the pearl and the button pretty much touched. And then I knew my clap, my loop closure would be the remainder of my um, ease for this bracelet. When you have knotted your final bit here, you actually want to put one more pearl past the last knot because what, when we started, we started out with an overhand knot next to a pearl. So if we want this side to match that, then what we need to do is put one more pearl for the end. And now we can take all four of those cords together. And I'm gonna go 
ahead and get this out of the way here. All four of those cords together and then we're going to tie an overhand knot. And like before, we kind of want to make sure that we cinch it up right underneath the pearl itself. And if we need to, we can separate out each cord to kind of tighten it up a little bit. Okay. So now the only thing that we have left, oh, this is so cute. I love this teal with the white that looks so pretty. I mean, it totally goes with what I have on today. Um, however, it's not my size. <laughs> it's Barbie's size. <laughs> but what we need to do now is create this opening right here that we're going to use as a bracelet loop. So it's going to go around the uh, button that you have used. So when you're doing this, you only need two strands for this part. So what I did is I actually went through, I went in here and picked two of kind of the inner strands and I'm actually just going to cut them out because we do not need those anymore. Okay. So here's the two remaining strands for that button closure. And I'm just going to kind of guesstimate here where I want the knot to sit. And as I'm closing it up, I don't want to close it too hard because what I want to do is test this button. So I know that I need the button to fit through. So that's kind of the maximum size that I need it to be. So as I'm tightening down on that knot and tightening inward, I just want to make sure that the button's going to fit through it. And we should be just fine like so. It's fitting through. It's nice and tight, but not so tight that you can't get it on and off. And then we can just cut this off. On this one, I cut the tails really short and I kind of wished that I hadn't. Um, I wish that I'd left a long tail because once, if you do that, now you could even throw, you know, like a couple of seed beads on here and tie a knot in the end or, you know, some kind of additional decoration, or it can just be a little bit of a, of a tassel kind of action for you. So here we go. That was how simple it was to make Barbie's new bracelet. Ah! And yes, I totally am going to be redoing this to Jill size <laughs> when, uh, when I finish with this video because that bracelet needs to be in my life. <laughs> It's a super simple project and you can get a lot of bang for your buck. You're using freshwater pearls. Um, I have found the best suppliers for the big hole pearls. I, when you're buying fresh hole per, freshwater pearls without being able to see them in person, like I'm not there picking them out. You have to find a really reputable uh, dealer for those. Um, I know it sounds like drugs, right? Well, Beads are our gateway drug, right? So, um, <laughs> so I have found a really good pearl vendor that I absolutely trust to just send me a box and say, I want the best of what you've got. Uh, there are all sorts of different colors. There's different sizes. These ones, the white ones are a little bit on the bigger side. The green ones are a little on the medium size. They do make smaller ones. They even make faceted pearl ones. Uh, those are more, much more rare and more expensive, but worth it. <laughs> so I hope that you enjoy making a bunch of these bracelets because I think it's like the perfect summer, fabulous casual. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, if you're using a freshwater pearl, you do have to be a little careful in how you care for it. They will scratch and you don't want to expose them to chemicals. So like you don't want to take them in the ocean, for instance, because, well, I guess they're made in the ocean. So I guess the ocean would actually be A-OK. -okay. That's silly. But um, you do want to be careful of what they're exposed to because uh, freshwater pearls can get damaged. All right. Happy beating!